that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. At this time, we have multiple air assets from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore Police Department, as well as multiple Marine assets from around the region, including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, as well as multiple local and state police uh, agencies, uh, National Resources Police, um, BPD Special Ops Unit is in here, Maryland State Police is here. We have multiple resources. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. We have a large area that we have to search. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. We believe at this point, we may be looking for, we may be looking for upwards of seven individuals. That's the latest information we have. However, what I will say is, is the information that I'm giving you right now is as of right now. That's what we know right now. Um, this is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating. Therefore, information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning. Um, over the next 8 to 12 hours, you can expect to continue to see um, our air and maritime assets functioning um, out on the water and in the air above. Um, we need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, and we need to continue our subsurface search, which is including um, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar. We have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So. Um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Mayor, Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, everyone, this is an unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to, uh, first and foremost, pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families, uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is an ongoing active uh, research uh, that we're having right now. We're going to continue, as you heard from Chief Wallace, to throughout as long as we have to be doing that, we will do it. Uh, but we have to be thinking about the families and people impacted, uh, folks who uh, we have to try to find and save. This is what our focus should be on right now. We're going to continue to work in partnership with every part of government to do everything that we can uh, to get us through the other side of this tragedy. And with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Olszewski. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Um, I think we all awoke this morning to an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we know that there will be families and individuals impacted by this, regardless of what happens the rest of the way out. Uh, so I would just echo the mayor in lifting up prayers for those who are impacted, but also ask that our residents pay, pray for our first responders. Um, you know, they have been on scene since very early in the morning, um, not only conducting initial search and rescue operations, but planning for uh, additional ones as the sun comes up. And, um, you know, the work that they do cannot be understated. And we just, I want to just thank them for all that they are doing and, and will do in the hours and days ahead. Uh, we know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently. Uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support, just as we want to thank um, our state partners for the resources they've offered up, uh, as well as uh, the federal partners who have already reached out. Uh, the mayor and I have talked to the governor. We've, we've heard from the secretary of transportation. Uh, so collectively, we thank everyone for uh, their thoughts, their well wishes. Uh, but again, this is a very active situation, and we want to just thank uh, the chief and our teams for all the great work they're doing. And with that, I'll turn things back over to the chief. Thank you, County. 
have everyone uh, present one question for this talk. Chief, can you tell us where the crew of the ship is? Um, you also mentioned, too, that, that two people were rescued. Who made the first 911 call? And there were reports that it was a crew on the deck of the ship working at that point. Can you confirm any of that? Again? The latest information we have on the, sh on the crew of the ship is that they are still on board the ship. Um, there's been comms between the ship crew and the Coast Guard. So as, as part of the uh, overall operation, we communicate through the Coast Guard with the ship. And, and I'm sorry, your other questions? There were two people taken. Who made the first 911 call? I don't know who's who made that call yet. Okay, and there were, were there other workers on the, the deck of the ship, at the, or the deck of the bridge at this point? We had heard that information. Can you confirm that? We were being told there were workers on the bridge. We have yet to confirm that. Um, we'll work with MDTA to, to, you know, obviously to get that information. About how many cars were on that ship? Last question. Uh, on the uh, on the deck of the bridge at the time of the last. You know Don't I'm have saying? a number. I can tell you our sonar has detected the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. I don't have a count of that yet. Yeah, I'll start with the last one. So I don't know how many vehicles yet. I know that we have detected the presence of vehicles. As far as the number between the 7 and 20, that's been a dynamic count um, throughout the morning. Just given the fact that we haven't yet nailed that number down, we do believe that at least seven are involved in that, at least seven at this point. Yes, ma'am. We do not. So we'll be guided by, by our dive teams. We will determine what the temperature of the water is. The other issue that we have out there is this water is, is, is current uh, influenced. So right now we think the tide is coming back in. That adds a bit of a challenge to us also. We can certainly dive in these conditions, but we have to take a lot of factors into play, right? The fact that there may be trauma involved, they have been in, in the water an extended period of time, um, but also remember, we're battling darkness. So, you know, it's, it's quite possible that we may have somebody there that we've not seen yet. Um, and as they work closer to the debris field, um, you know, they'll, they'll obviously make those determinations. But we're gonna rely on the experts which are our, our, our dive masters that are here, our dive team, to tell us when they believe we've reached that, that, that non-survivability point. Thank you. Yes, sir. Janine? Chief Wallace, was there any indication that there was a problem on the ship? Was it led in by customers that anyone was there to make it? Like anything that's uh, so far early on pointing to something that's wrong? That we, we do not have that information with regard to the investigation. I would refer that to, to law enforcement. My, my focus since 1.40 this morning has been that rescue operation. So, so far there's been no indication that any kind of like an emergency dispatch came from that ship this morning? I have no information about that, ma'am. Have, have you been able to talk to the pilot, the American pilot on, on that bridge? The, the, the pilot on the vessel? Yeah. We have not talked to the pilot on the vessel. The rescue personnel, the rescue operation, we have not interacted. Just back over here. I don't have age and I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't I don't have age and gender on either. One patient refused service, right? It really, they weren't injured. The second patient, however, was seriously injured and is at an area trauma center. Are you including them in the seven, at least seven people? We don't know yet if they're part of that seven. Okay. The, 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 the patient is injured severely enough that we've not been able to debrief that patient. No, that was the initial information that we got as we were arriving on the scene, that number. And that number, again, as I said earlier, has fluctuated, right? But that, that seven has been a consistent number. How many agencies are in the right now? 
Oh, wow. Well. Dozens. Um, yeah, dozens. I mean, locally, you know, fire department wise, Baltimore County's here, Howard County's here, Harford uh, was here, PG was here, um, Anne Arundel, um, of course, Baltimore City. And a lot of those agencies are here by virtue of the fact that they may have specialized equipment that we need during an incident like this. So um, we're, we're bringing in the equipment specific to the operation right now. And then even, even law enforcement agencies have a lot of the same marine ops equipment as we do. So given the incident is so big, we try to force multiply and just bring as many resources in as we can so that we can really blanket a large area for a search. We don't, we've not been able to confirm that we actually have an active fuel spill from the vessel. Um, we've had odors of diesel fuel. The Maryland Department of the Environment is here, um, as well as the Coast Guard. So they would take leads on that as well. We hope as the sun comes up a little bit with the air assets that are up to get a much better picture. If we do have a fuel spill, what the impact has been so far. Yeah, Maryland State Police has been here. Um, Foxtrot is also working this. There, there are two air resources right now. Um, I don't know that we won't bring any more in, but right now they're the two primary. Um, you know, air reconnaissance on something on the open water is just, it's an invaluable resource. And we've been very fortunate to have it because as we put people out in the dark on the water to conduct searches, they have that degree of overwatch from those assets. So it's it's been an invaluable resource for us. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Executive, uh, we're talking about search and rescue. I know that, and that's where the focus is right now. I was awakened to this news. We're all awakened to this news. I've seen the video. What, what, what do you make of the totality of this incident? What are, what are you thinking about what you've seen and what this community's experienced? Well, this is a, a tragedy that you can never imagine, right? And uh, I was awake when Chief Wallace called me, but never would you think that you would see, physically see, the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. And you just think about, most importantly, and which is what we all should be thinking about right now, nothing but those families and people that are impacted and those people who are risking their lives right now from not just Baltimore City and Baltimore County, but all over this state to try to save lives. That should be our focus, the preservation of life, because no one and wants to see that happen, let alone someone in their family, someone that they know, uh, uh, be injured in an incident like this. We'll take two more your, questions. Your, your thoughts about what, you, what this community is experiencing this morning. Uh, look, I, I think that folks are stunned. I think folks are reeling. Uh, and I think that's particularly true for people who are worried about their loved ones right now. Uh, I think there'll be plenty of time to talk about what this bridge means to the community, what it means for commerce, but at the end of the day, right now this is about the humanity of people who are impacted and the men and women who are out there trying to save lives and, and recover folks off the bridge. So um, I think there'll be plenty of, plenty of opportunity to talk about that, but really uh, right now and for the foreseeable hours ahead, this is really about focusing on the search and rescue efforts. And I wanna just again, thank the chief for his leadership and, and for all of the affiliated partners that we have working on this. <coughs> that's that's not my focus here ma'am that's part of the law enforcement investigation so i would i would defer to to the proper authorities for that No, thank, no, thank you. I, I spoke with Secretary Bouges directly. Uh, he and his team said that they're going to obviously work with us throughout this incident and work with not just uh, the city and county, but really the state of Maryland uh, to make sure uh, that we have every resource that, that he and the federal government can provide. How long is it going to take to rebuild this land? I think right now, sir, uh, listen, we shouldn't even be having that discussion right now. The discussion right now should be about the people, the souls, the lives that we're trying to save. Uh, there will be a time to discuss about a bridge and how we get a bridge back up. But right now, there are people in the water that we have to get out, and that's the only thing we should be talking about.
And to go back to the question about the the terrorism, there is absolutely no indication that there's any terrorism, that, that this was done on purpose. Our criminal intel is working with the FBI and other federal and state agencies to get all the intel that we have, but there's absolutely no indication that it was intentional. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, I want to thank you all. Um, I will be advising you, updating you on the next report. Will that be here, Kevin?